Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as a 4 kids at 147 and it's time to kit up the first of the custom diamond paintings that I'm going to do. Um, so this one is from Huba Can. Um, they're all in square, they're all 40 by 50 but I'm going to start off with the Huba Can because I'm not sure quality wise how the Huba Can is going to be. Um, I definitely don't want it to be the last one that I do. Um, as far as I know, they have improved in regards to the quality of the square diamonds. But I do want to sort of get that one done first up. Um, what I'm going to use for this one is I'm going to use the Elizabeth Ward um, diamond painting tray set. Um, it's, oh hang on, it's 45 pieces. Hang on, does that include the lid as well? Two, four, hang on, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six, twenty eight, thirty, thirty two, thirty four, thirty six, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty two. I'm not going to use the Elizabeth Ward because this painting has 45 colours um, <clears throat> and I forgot that when it says it's a 45 piece that actually includes the lid and the base. So let's use, I don't have a 60 bottle of the normal round bottles that I go to use, um, let's use this Craftmates. This definitely has enough, this has 56 I want to say. So I'm going to use these, these are the lockables so they all open individually but you do have to push the end to be able to open each one. Oh, So they're a bit stiff but then when you let go it basically locks all the others in and um, you can still shut them so you can open one at a time and leave that one open. Let's give this one a go instead. Um, quite often the storage that I use is determined by the painting that I'm doing and how many colours. Um, as this is a Hua Can, they have all come in baggies, which is great because I can just tip in what I can tip in um, and anything that is left over, if it doesn't fit in one of these containers, can stay in the baggie really easy on that front. The only thing is they don't come with an inventory sheet so I want to label up my tubs and they do use some symbols that while I could draw them they would probably look a little bit pathetic. So I'm going to do something that may make some people squirm. Um, I'm going to cut the canvas. So I have got the inventory on both sides um, sorry to mum, in fact let me just cut my mother-in-law out first before, I don't want to cut through her face. Um, I'm going to cut the side off this painting and I'm going to use the canvas as my symbols and stickers and stuff because the DMC number is next to the symbol so I can do that. I'm going to cut all the way up. Um, it's not a very straight line, but at least that makes the canvas a little bit squarer. Now, you could take a picture of this or a scan of this um, to, to then create yourself basically your own inventory sheet. But this is the easy route for me. And I cut through all of my canvases when they're done anyway. I cut the edge off them all um, for either, you know, mounting them or putting them in frames or whatever else. So it, it's not a big drama to me to cut the canvas, so I'm just going to do it. Apologies to anybody that may have had a mini heart attack, but I now have an inventory sheet for myself, which I'm going to pop through my Xyron sticker maker. That was amazingly gifted to me by a subscriber and that is going to make the back of my canvas sticky which means I can then use it 
as a sticker sheet. So let's move all these out the way. Let's bring in this. I am also going to divide this canvas up. I'm looking forward to using the Decision Maker app to decide where I'm going to do on these canvases. It actually made the last comparison sort of paintings that I did because I didn't start using the Decision Maker app until late on. Ooh. This is right near the edge, so I'm not actually getting to cut without it going all the way through. How many do we have per one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I'm also cutting through a thicker canvas. I'm not quite able to tell when I reach the end. In fact, this is probably going to be a bad idea. Okay, so I know that one's first. Well, this is going to look pretty though. What was next? I have another list here. 154 was next. This is the only thing when it comes, it goes in your sticker sheet or skew it. Um, I could probably cut it upside down. I might try that in a minute. 168 is next. There it is. So I am putting them in DMC order. Some people do prefer to do them in symbol order. Um, but DMC order seems to work for me. 225 was next. Then 310. Yeah, just checking I've not missed any as well with cutting them and then flying off everywhere. 316. They're sitting on really nice. Look how pretty that is. Make that one stick down. All these are going to look nice. And they may or may not hold all they need to hold. We'll see. Okay. Is it 334 next? Yeah. Let's see if I cut it this way. If I can stop myself from going to the edge. The problem is, is say, because I am cutting through a canvas, it's a tougher material. So... As soon as my scissors sort of reach the end of the canvas, I don't quite have as much time to react before the scissors just start cutting through a material that's a whole lot thinner. Um, so I don't have as much control as I potentially would I'm using a different type of medium. So that's the first row done. I think let's move this case out of the way and let's just bring in each individual pot. Because I think if I'm trying to deal with it going back into the case while getting it up as well, I'm going to drive myself up the wall. I don't know if I've cut the right amount or not. No, it looks like I'm one short. Again, four on four, four on five, sorry. <clears throat> okay, let's get rid of that. And I've done it again. Didn't move, didn't stop squeezing the scissors quite quick enough. Okay, let's try again. So I'm actually not putting the scissors in quite as far. So if it does go all the way to the end, that's fine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the next tray. Is it seven? Yeah, it's seven. Two, oh, so that's number two. Three, four, five, six, and seven. 
And what I do like about being able to use the actual, an image of the actual symbols, whether that be on an inventory sheet or like I'm doing now by cutting up the canvas, is you've got the colour behind it as well. And I find, you know, that can do, your site does a process of elimination on all those that are the wrong colour anyway. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier. Okay, you can hold this the way round now that I want to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, your brain already knows it's looking for a green colour or it's looking for a brown colour. So I do find that can make it a lot easier when you're trying to hunt out the symbol that you want. These are quite small, so it won't work for everybody. Though if you did scan it or photocopy it, you could make it bigger. You could even make it so that you had a really big symbol that is exactly the same as, as what you have on the canvas maybe if you struggle um, with seeing some of the symbols maybe you use a magnifier for your actual diamond painting working on your diamond painting itself and um, maybe you struggle to see what you know what your storage is then taking a photograph or a scan of the canvas and printing it out bigger than it actually is could be very helpful. In fact, these containers, even though I've not given them a full good use yet, um, these containers could help with that because there is a lot of space to put a symbol. Okay, so I'm on to the next side of it now. It's quite compact, these as well. I do like the fact that they're quite compact. It'll be interesting to see what they are like to work with. I'll get a little idea of it as I'm kitting them up, of what it's like to try and open each individual one, because I'm not gonna try and find the bags in the right color order. I'm just gonna pick up a bag and that will decide what it is, what number it is that I'm putting away or putting in the in for go. There is a lot of colours in this though. And this isn't even the custom painting that I'm doing with the most colours. So it's going to get very entertaining when I get to the one that's got 70 colours. I'm trying to think if it was close to being the most colours. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. <coughs> okay, last one. There is still one tray that's free as well, so if I did want to put any of the extras in there, I can. But for now, I'm going to see how I go with each individual pot because they're pretty full. They're pretty big pots. They are pretty big and pretty deep. Okay, so they're all done. So first bag, 8.20. So I need to push in that to allow them to open and then push open 820. And then we'll tip these in. Oh. And then it will still close because it will just push the latch itself. Um, I am gonna use this little bin that I got from Lou, the pop-up bin that she sent me, um, the big one. We're actually using that all the time, but most of the time it's set up on the, it's on the dining table in the conservatory. Um, and we use it when we're packing orders for the shop and sorting stuff out, you know, for the backs of the envelopes and things like that. So we've actually been using it loads, but I've not been using it loads on video. Oh, we're doing really well. Okay, so here's one that's fuller. This is 310. 
and there's 1,896 in here according to who I can. So let's see how this bag, it's not the fullest, let's see how this bag goes. Okay, nowhere near panicking. There we go, nowhere near panicking. I'm not even sure if you can see how much space there is. I'm trying not to tip it too much because then of course it will start sliding but there's a decent amount of room if you look at the side here still left in that one so i think we're going to get everything in here but we'll see one five three so again just push in the little lock and then tip in i think these will be really good when you only need one or two diamonds as well because it's got quite a, a decent size bottom um, you'll actually be able to get hold of the bottom, you know, dip your pen in. Okay, so seven, seven, nine. And I am having a look for something that says it's got over 2,000 diamonds. At the moment, I think 310 was the most with 1,800. And that one had a lot, but not quite as many as 310. Uh, three eight three six. So this is the only part that could potentially be a bit of a pain. Is getting them to unlock, and I think some of them are a little bit easier than others. And it may be that it's not been used that much. I know there are people that use these and love them. Three eight four two. So push that in. I guess there'll be a knack as well to opening them, you know, to how far you push that button in to find the sweet spot. And it may be that I'll know what that is over time. But look at that, that only had, how many did that say it had? Is that the right one? 3842, it said it had four in it. Okay, there's a bit more than four. Um, apparently for this painting, I only need four. So I am sure that I will not be tipping them into my tray. I will be just be dipping my pen in. 3860, again, this one. But I just want to open this top. Next, 963. They do balance on top of each other. I don't think they'd like it a lot. They're not something that you could potentially have stacked. But they're okay steady enough for me to put a diamond in. But so far, this, this is working okay. I mean, even though who it can don't send an inventory sheet, the fact that all their diamonds are in baggies, um, rather than the separate little pouches, do make it a lot easier to open, uh, to kit up, a lot quicker. Oh, hang on, that's going to be fun. So I've just dropped one in the little lock mechanism. And of course, I've put new tips in most of my pens. So I was just trying to find a pen that actually already had wax in it. Just had to dip my pen in to get it out. Okay, so this one, 935. This one says 2,607 is what it says on the packet. Now, of course, we know that that's not necessarily exact. It normally has more. But let's, well, if, if we go by the ratio of the other one saying it had four. So this is over two and a half thousand diamonds. and we fit. We're definitely getting closer to the top, but we fit and we shut comfortably. So that's all, oh, and there's an extra one. Of course, there's one hiding in the bag. Is that the one that I have the most of? 
Oh no, 934 says I need 2,400. Whereas 935 says I only need 2,200. And of course it gave me 2,600. So 934 is the colour that we have the most of. Is that 934? No. Okay, I'll find 934 in a bit. I will point it out because that should be the one that we have the most of. 3362. Um, and if we can get all the diamonds in from that, then we should be fine on every other colour. I mean, that one we had quite a few. I do think when I'm de-kitting this, just sort of thinking ahead, um, when this one is de-kitted, I think I'm going to have to tip it into a tray before being able to tip it into a bag. That's the only thing. I'm not sure what this is going to be like when tipping it into a tray. I think if you worked on a small tray, it could be very difficult. Because the tray I work with is quite big, I think I'll be okay. But it could be entertaining. Having said that, I don't know how big a section I'm going to do yet, so I may find that I'm actually just dipping my pen into the pot a lot more on this painting. If it's very confetti, then it may be that I do that. And that will, you know, just be because I'm doing small sections. We'll see. I am going to divide the canvas up in a bit. Three, seven, four, six. There is sort of a sweet spot on this. I think some of them I may have pushed it a bit too far before I tried to open it. I don't know. Okay, three, seven, four, three. Have I? No, it's just stiff. Some of them are stiffer than others. And I've just dropped to get back in. Okay, three, three, six. It's a bit of a different kitting up by this, isn't it? I was looking forward to using the Elizabeth Hall containers as well. I've not used them for a while. But we'll see. Maybe the next one. I can't remember how many colours are in the next one, but I will definitely be using it for one of them that I get a chance to, especially because a lot of my round containers are all used up. Uh, 4x4. Plus, I do like trying different containers. Um, I do have my favourites, but I do like mixing it up every now and then. These are really nice to kit up with. I don't know what they're going to be like working with, but they're really nice to kit up with. I like the fact that if you've got one container open, you're not as likely to... You know, if you dropped it, it would only be that container you'd lose. All the diamonds would go everywhere, which could be very helpful. If you have kids as well that like to help... <coughs> we all know those kids that like to help. Mine were those kids that liked to help until they became teenagers, and now they don't like to help anymore. Um, yeah, if you've got those children that like to help you diamond paint, these containers might be ideal, even if there are some drawbacks. Um, it may be that for the safety of the diamonds. It is worth it. Okay. I've put 168 in there. Okay, so just as my memory card saved, I realised that I had 168 here, but it already has diamonds in. So, my brain went, what have I done? But then I've realised that there's two numbers on the bags and I've probably looked at the wrong one. So I just had a quick look through my bin. Um, and in fact, I have. So this should be the number 340. 
um, that actually has 168 diamonds and I've put it into 168. So let's move this over to 340. That actually makes more sense. Let's see. Oh, they do tip from one to the other. Fair enough. I just don't think they're going to tip into a bag. And then let's put the correct 168 and tell myself to pay attention. And that suits the colour of the symbol better. At least they were in different tubs and I didn't have to get a go-between of um, I didn't have to get a go-between of a tray to make it all work. Okay, so I've only got one more on here, so I've just gone the bags are getting a bit lower. So I just had a look for the colour I need, which is 334. Only 22 of those. Painting only needs 19. So I think that's another one I'll just be dipping my pen in for. Okay, 640. And then I might have a look and see if I've got, hmm, it, it's borderline weather. The bags are a little bit, the amount of bags I've got left, they're a little bit in between searching for the numbers I need and a little bit of, no, let's just grab a number. That's that big 934 bag. That will be interesting. So let's have a look. Can I see them easily? Let's go back here. 335. I found that one. So let's kit up. Let's kit up by strip and when I've done a couple I'll put them away in the in the bag. So this one is 415, which should be a grey. There it is. 415 and then pushing the little button 452 which is here that's over a thousand of this one plenty of room actually looks like this painting doesn't take that much but it does 453 and I've just got them all laid out now so that I can see the colours. Just makes it a little bit easier. 469. Uh, it says there's 813 on this bag. 550. Have a lovely dark purple. And then 762 is a pale grey there we go so that's three rows done and dusted and then seven nine six seven nine six seven nine seven the blues that must be in a cardigan she's not wearing a lot of blue okay 819 it's 1800 of these so we should be fine and dandy if I don't drop them everywhere okay this is the one that's going to be fun because this is the one that we have the most of so this is 934. This says it has 2,916 in the bag. So we have close to 3,000 diamonds. Let's see. They do all fit. I wouldn't like to drop these on the floor and have to pick them up. But they do all fit. And there is a little bit of breathing room. So that's good. Um, so let's pop these back in their case because these first four are done. I do have visions of them not staying in this case holder 
for the duration of my diamond painting. I do have visions of them being out and about, but we'll see. Okay, 961. Three o four two. That mauvey colour that appears everywhere. It appears in black and white paintings a lot. That one. And three o seven two. The off green. So that appears in a lot of black and white photos as well. It's amazing how much green and purple it is. And then three three six three. Going to be a lot of green in this painting which I sort of expected, it's the background. And then we've got 3787. And then 3861. I'm guessing we're gonna have quite a bit of this in the face. Because that is quite a dark color. So to bring these over and sort of pop the diamond part of this preparation away, there we go. So that is them all stored and labelled. See, when I tilt that up there to show you this, they all fall out, but I've got hold of them now. Um, and that is the other half. And then they're fine when you go that way because this part is sealed. It does go quite compact though, considering I've just kitted up a 40 by 50 painting with that many colours. I think that's done pretty well. So if you don't have a lot of space to work, um, you could label that up. Do you know what I will do? Will that tuck in? Okay, so a face does tuck in on the end, which means I can put my mother-in-law there. Uh, but then I do also have the sticker that I use on my storage. I'm gonna stick that over the top of the outside part because then I can remove it. Um, but basically it says it's the Brenda Custom because that was her name. Um, it's a 40 by 50 and this one is from Who I Can in Square. And I label up all my sort of canvases and diamonds. In this case, I didn't label up the canvas, but that's only because um, they're there on my projects. They're the only things on there together. Um, but normally I label my canvas with a name and the diamonds um, so that I have them. And these are available in my shop. Just look at them. Okay. Now it's the exciting time. So now it is canvas prep time. Now, this is what I find is the main benefit for diamond paintings that come with the double-sided tape is that I can divide these up um, and create myself sections for the diamond painting. So I'm going to start with the long section. I'm trying to think the best way to do it because I've got five of the who I can, but I don't know if I want to do my line down the middle. I think that might be too narrow a piece, though I could do narrow, but long, or I could try and divide it roughly down the middle and do fat squares. <sighs> so many decisions. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go long and narrow because I have been doing that with, sorry, I'm just fighting for a ruler while talking to you. Um, I have been doing that with my Evermoment custom panel paintings. And I like the fact that it's a little bit different. I'm still doing quite a bit of the design, but I'm doing it long and thin. So I'm going to sort of go for the top of this symbol, I think, and that's why I'm thinking up here it's going to be even thinner, but then I'm not going to divide it as much this way. So this is sort of about the width of my ruler. 
only a little bit more than the width of my ruler and it's not going to be straight it never is straight but that's fine too this section is quite a bit is, is a bit wider than the other one but that's just because of the divide that they've already got in the middle but again that's fine too it's just it's different and you've got to have these little things that are different when you're diamond painting but just see look that is a really long but thin strip and then I will either divide it into two or three um, going down and either do half of the painting but a really long, I might do three actually. Let's just do the other side. So the other side's a little bit more even. I'm going to go for where the N is. This other sort of half of the painting will end up with roughly the same size strips. Now, not all of the top papers that you can get do have the, the lines in a straight line. Ooh. And if you don't actually hold your craft knife to the ruler, then no, it's a straight line. Um, one of the other sort of top cover papers, I think it says Sun Group or something. Let me have a look, I've got one here. Sun or Group. S-U-N-N-O-R group. They sort of worked on an angle, but they're also staggered. Um, so just go for what works for you. So yeah, that, that strip here is thinner than this strip. Only by a little bit, but it is a little bit thinner. But that's fine, because there's not a huge difference between the two. Okay, so two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, just short of 14. So if I go for 5 here, well, see, this doesn't help now because this section is lined up different to this section. But luckily, my ruler goes all the way. Okay, and then five and let's go a little bit less than five and that's roughly into a third roughly that'd be right so if i take off this bottom corner that is sort of the size of a section that i'm going to work on and um, sometimes i do work on bigger sections but there can be something nice about working on a smaller section. Now, quite often I will section it up like this and then that's it then. I will take it away and I will start, you know, say the bottom corner um, and I'll maybe work up or around depending on what the pattern is and I'll do one or two sections. I might peel off two sections if I know that I've got quite a bit of time to diamond paint. But one of my latest little loves is the Tiny Decisions app on my phone. So let me show you one. Uh, this one. Okay, so this one I've divided up into 16 sections. So basically I've just added the numbers 1 to 16. Um, and I numbered my sections on my painting. And then it, I just spin it and it tells me what number section to do. So number three. So I would go to number three, which in this case would be that one, and I'd do that section. And then it could tell me to do one over here, one over here, one up there. It all varies. Um, but I'm really, really liking it. So how many? So that was divided up into 10. 10, 20, 30 to be able to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this one that is already 16 sections 
and I'm going to go into edit, oh, to edit it, so I'm going to press on the little pencil. So can you see, all I've done is added the numbers 1 through to 16. So I'm going to add 17, 18, and it can be a bit of a tedious process, which is why when I've finished a painting, I don't delete the wheel. I just rename it into how many is in that section. And I don't tend to take sections off, um, but I will add. So rather than typing out 30, one to 30 separately, I'm adding it onto the 16 I've already done. 24, 25, 26, oh, 27, 28, 29, 30. So that is now classed, that now has 30 sections and I'm going to rename it um, Custom, Custom, Who I Can. So I've renamed it to Custom Who I Can so I know which wheel I'm choosing. So I'll choose the Custom wheel for Who I Can and it's now got 30. Oh, don't want to rate you at the moment. I do like you though. So it's now got 30 sections. So when I tap on that, it will tell me what section to do. So in that case, nine. Once I've done it, I press it again and it will give me the next section, which is six. And you can always reset the wheel. Um, so that's what I do when I finish the painting, I reset it. So what I need to do now is number up my sections so that when the wheel decides, I know what they are. So for this, if I can find them, I do also use stickers from my shop. I get all the misprints. So if we have any ink transfer, they get sent to me, but that's fine. <laughs> um, so I'm just quite simply numbering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now some people do um, the likes of a sharpie or something on these but when my daughter did a Tinkerbell she found that if you brushed against it too much it could come off um, and because we diamond paint in sort of you know sat in front of the TV when we finish diamond painting for the evening we do tend to move them so they get moved into my craft room for storing during the day and then they come back out when we're working on them. Uh, so because of that, they are moved about a bit. Um, <coughs> and because of that fact, I, I don't want something that's gonna rub off. So you can number these randomly as well if you wanted to, but I find the random part comes from what the app decides. So I like to just number these in the right order. Now you could do them up and down or across. It's a bit like the advent calendar that I do in December, but also not. Um, it's similar though when I do my advent calendar or when I did my advent calendar in December, I put the numbers in a random order because I was matching up to the days of the month. And that is something that you can also do with this. So ignore the tiny decisions app. If you don't get much time to diamond paint or, you know, you want to get a project finished by a certain time frame, you could set yourself a target of doing a section per day. And then you could number them with the days of the month. And you could do it in order, and it's just a little tracker for yourself to confirm, you know, we all know life can get busy, a few days can go past, and you could think to yourself, did I diamond paint yesterday? Did I not? You know, it's that whole remembering thing when you've got a lot going on in your life. 
Um, so maybe this would just help you to remember if you did diamond paint that day or not. Um, and you could do them in order or you could mix them up and still do one section a day but have it dotted all over your diamond painting. And the sections can be as big or as small as you like. Um, Megan's Tinkerbell painting I think has 70 plus she has over 70 squares on hers. Um, I work on quite big sections. Normally I'd actually probably have a section twice the size of this. But I am liking mixing the likes of these comparison up with other diamond paintings. So I'll do a section on this, but then I'll do a section on another painting. Um, though having said that, I need to do a couple of sections a night, otherwise this one's going to take me a month. Um, but to give you a close up, that's what it looks like now. So I've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen down that side, because of course I've got a cross. Um, and those little stickers tend to stay fine on there. Like occasionally, if you know, if you bent it at a funny angle, they may come off. But I tend to find they they stick down fine. I've not had a problem with any of them popping off once I've, you know put them down properly um, so yeah tiny decisions is going to decide in which order it'll be fun to see some pieces of this come together and I like the fact that I can do it on most of the customs that I've got I tend to just do it on the paintings that have this cover um, so I do get quite excited when I've got this cover because it's like oh I can use my app anyway I'm gonna stop waffling on now um, yeah, that is the first custom painting kit up. It may take me a while to get through um, all the customs that I purchased just due to the size, but hopefully you'll join me for all the kitting ups and de-kittings and for the final reveal when it happens. But thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.